Hi and welcome back to a new video. Today we will talk about the Thermal Grizzly 12th Gen Contact Frame. So that's the product which we also showed you in some of our week vlogs in the previous weeks and months, which is a product we developed in-house and produced here in Berlin. It's a tool to improve the thermals for 12th Gen Intel CPUs. And in today's video we will finally be able to present it to you to yeah, show you what you can do with it and how it will improve potentially the thermals of a 12th Gen Intel CPU. And somehow we also have to fund the entire cat food and that's why we are taking a look at today's sponsor which again is Hetzner. Because Hetzner is running a special offer right now with no setup fee for AX servers. Those are the servers which are featuring AMD Ryzen desktop CPUs. For example the AX41 which is using the Ryzen 5 3664 GB of memory. Using this one you would save $40 and you would save $108 if you have the AX101 which is featuring the 5950X 16 core AMD Ryzen with 128GB of ECC memory and dual 3.84TB NVMe drives. As usual everything will come with the Hetzner Premium services such as Gigabit connection and no minimum contract period. Find out more in the link in the description below. Before we get to the product itself and also some of the features it has, we first want to talk about what is the general problem of what we're even talking about. So back then in December 2021, Igor Slab was finding out that the integrated loading mechanism of the Intel CPUs for Socket 1700, the ILM, is causing some of these Intel CPUs to slightly be bent. So the ILM, this is this part right here, will hold the CPU in the socket and also distribute the load onto the heat spreader which is then pushing the CPU down into the socket making contact with the pins which then is responsible for like data connection with the memory, PCI Express and also power delivery from the VRMs. And compared for example with socket 1200, the 1700 socket is a bit wider, like the CPUs are longer. And we only have the contact right here and here, which is then causing the CPU to be bent slightly in the center. And already end of December 2021, we had the first prototype ready, which was just a plain frame, like making contact with the entire CPU. And luckily these 12th gen Intel CPUs, because they have this edge all around the CPU, like these second steps in the IHS, we decided to just make the contact frame the way that it also has contact on the entire like second step of the CPU. But then we also figured out that it doesn't really make much sense to just plainly cover the like second step of the IHS because we figured out that the area of these notches should be elevated by about 40 to 50 micrometer. It's not much and also like the tolerances on this product they have to be like really tight and accurate otherwise you will not be able to like reproduce temperature benefits. But then once we figured out that we need like a like a curve inside the inner um, structure then we figured out uh, this will be better and returned it back to Splave and then also early February he managed to have a new record in Cinebench R20 with 1200KS clocked to 6940 megahertz and he was able to have a benefit of about 40 to 50 megahertz it's not much but in the extreme overclocking world running really on the edge 40 to 50 megahertz that can be quite a lot. Splave then again noticed a very interesting temperature behavior of his CPU but you also have to keep in mind that his CPU was lapped prior to all his testing. It was lapped outside of the socket. And then he thought about so if the CPU is bent inside the socket might as well make sense to lap it in the socket. So he took an ASRock C690 Aqua board and he cut the socket out of the board. Which is something you usually probably shouldn't do, but then he took the CPU back into the socket and this way he was able to lap the CPU inside the socket, so under pressure. And you can clearly see a difference between the previous lapping attempt and then after it's sitting inside the socket under pressure that there is some huge change again. So back to the board, how can we provide this to you without cutting out sockets from the board? And then we came up with this like additional solution. It's a piece of acrylic which is going to be available as like a second product. And um, yeah, this is basically going to be the lapping device for lapping the CPU under pressure. And that's the final product. Packaging is very simple, very similar to our thermal paste. And inside the package we have our frame. It's made out of aluminium, 7075, it's black anodized, so it's not electrically conductive. 7075 was also a bit of a bitch when it comes to the anodizing process, but we finally managed to get all the process in, li in line, so it looks 
pretty nice in the end. There are also instructions included, also the tool which is necessary to mount it in the socket, also instructions like how many newton meters of torque you would need to mount it in the socket, which is also, it's pretty funny, it's 0.03 to 0.06 newton meters. The material choice was also one of the questions we had several times in previous videos and some were asking could you not just like 3D print this out of like plastic. That's obviously possible to print a part like this with a 3D printer but then like the internal structure height difference of 40 micrometer that will not be possible like tolerance wise there's no chance. And also if you think about because this is also an extreme overclocking product and if you go from like plus 70 degrees Celsius, which is like typical operating temperature of a 12900K, and the contact frame has direct contact with the IHS, so it also will have the same kind of temperature. Then you cool it down with LN2 to minus 200, which is also like the typical temperature range of liquid nitrogen overclocking with a 12900K. You have a temperature difference of 270 Kelvin, which means that because this is like, I don't know, like 75 millimeter in length. And then you will have a length difference of the frame with plastic of about 0.2 millimeter. That's like 200 micrometers. While we want to have tolerances of 40 micrometers inside, you can clearly see that's not going to work out. Apart from that, it's going to be more brittle. It will break once in a while, depending on the plastic you go you're going to use. And yeah, just tolerance wise, it's not a good idea. To mount the contact frame, we obviously first have to remove the original ILM. Open this one, but I would recommend that you leave the CPU inside the socket simply to protect your pins. Then you can start removing the stock parts. In the next step, I would recommend you take any kind of like permanent marker pencil, like a white one or like a gold one, silver one, something you can clearly see on like a darker surface and mark the screw on one side, like you can see it on here. Then obviously put on the contact frame. It will only fit in one direction because the dimension on top and dimension on bottom is different. Now you take the included key and that's also one of the reasons why, why we included this specific one. You use this one to tighten the screws and also use it just between two fingers. And like once you reached the max torque, you can pretty much apply with your two fingers. That should be good for start. Now you might remember that we had this 0.03 to 0.06 newton meters of torque, which will be a bit difficult to apply because nobody of us will have the according torque wrench. But that's why we have these markings on the screws and also why we marked the screws themselves. You remember the marking on the screw, you add your wrench and then you only rotate it by 90 degree, like a quarter rotation. And that's what you will repeat on all of the remaining screws, like at your wrench and then a quarter rotation. The thing is you definitely do not want a massive amount of pressure, like mounting pressure, because at this state, usually there is like half to a full rotation left of the screw. And if you use the entire like force that's left in tightening the screws, you will probably not be able to boot. At that point, the mounting pressure will be so enormously high that you might lose, for example, memory contact. It will not damage anything, but you will not have like memory contact to the socket, for example, and then you have to like loosen the screws a little bit and then it should work. But at this point where you did this like quarter rotation, you have the marking on the frame, you have the marking on the screw, then you can test from that point on. So you can see, is the memory back in place? Is the memory working as intended, like clocking exactly as before? Then you can tighten, for example, by another 45 degree or like loosen the screws and this way also be a bit more independent on the mounting pressure, which is something that does not work with the washer mod. Like with the washer mod, the only thing you can do is close the socket or open the socket. There's like nothing else you can change except for using different washer sizes. The question will obviously always be what kind of temperature benefit can you expect? And that will depend on your individual CPU and also the cooler you're using. Following Igor's lab testing, for example, he had like five to six degrees Celsius benefit. And he also pointed out that his benefit was quite a bit bigger using a custom cooler than using an AIO cooler. And I was doing testing with 14 different CPUs and I was using an EK magnitude cooler, but I also want to point out that my EK magnitude was lapped. 
And in this chart, we can see the temperature difference. For example, CPU 1 had a benefit of 3.4 degrees Celsius, CPU 2, 4.9 degrees Celsius, CPU 5, for example, 6.8 degrees Celsius, and CPU 10, 7.1. But then we also had, for example, CPU 7, which had a negative impact of 0.3. But at the same time, I think everything which is like below one degree Celsius difference is probably measurement tolerance. My testing results are pretty much identical to what Igor discovered back then. So about four to five degrees Celsius, I guess is to be expected without lapping the CPU. But that's also why we had this tool right here. And maybe let's talk a bit more about that one. Going back to what we said early in the video when Alan cut out his socket out of the mainboard, this is pretty much the same idea. So we have this additional acrylic block and use that one in combination with your contact frame. You mount your CPU in there. You can see it's basically a socket replacement. And this way you can lap the CPU while it's like under pressure. If you compare this one with, for example, the like imprint that Splay had while he did his lapping. When he lapped his CPU, you, he had like a clear like imprint on here and here. While if you mount it inside the acrylic block, from my experience, it will always look a bit more like this. I did this like lapping on purpose, stopped like halfway through, so it's a bit more visible to see. Otherwise, if I go all the way down to the copper, it will not be as visible. Going back to tolerances. Simply take this one and measure the total height of our CPU, which you can see is about 13 millimeter. If we measure like down here on the contact frame, we can see this is about 12.5 millimeter. So we have a height difference of this surface to this one of about 0.5 millimeter. So in theory, you could lab your CPU, let's say by 400 micrometers, which is definitely more than enough. But at the same time, the outer part of the acrylic piece has a height of 12.8. So you have a height difference of this to the outer part by 200 micrometers, which from my experience is more than enough. Most CPUs will be entirely like copper looking after lapping. If you go down by 0.2 millimeters, some might still have some of the nickel left, which will only be like a visible thing, but it will not give you like any kind of further like temperature benefits. But the, the key is that you can lap your CPU a little bit, like by up to 0.2 millimeters, then you will see an imprint on the acrylic. You stop lapping because you will not hurt your like contact frame. It's still sitting a little bit lower. After a bit of lapping, you can get a clear imprint on the CPU and also you can see that it's a bit concave. And that alone will give you another like two to four degrees Celsius temperature benefit. So now I think you can understand why it took a bit longer than a week to develop this and also with like the lapping frame and tool and everything. But it was a lot of fun to develop this product. We will have worldwide availability of this pretty soon. We already have them in stock and already started shipping out them to other retailers around the world last week. So should be available all around the globe pretty soon. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. See you soon.